One of the challenges with managing password settings in Active Directory is that because they are because the password settings are in the default domain policy and it applies to the organizational unit where the domain controllers are kept, what happens is that everybody in the domain ends up with the same password settings. Uh, so they have the same minimum password length, the same uh, age complexity settings, the same lockout policies. All these apply to everybody the same. Well, we don't always want that. Starting in, I believe it was server 2012, we actually have a way to deal with this now, and that is using a password settings object. Now, we don't do this in group policies. We do this in the, let's open it up here, Active Directory Administrative Center. And what we're looking for is the password settings container. Now, if you don't have it over here, which you probably won't until you've opened it up at least once, you'll go to your domain and then let me use the arrow key and then system to arrow over and then you're going to find the password settings container and you'll click on it and it will open up the password settings container and then it'll populate over here so you'll have easier access to it next time okay what the password settings policies does is it lets us create it'll override the group policy uh settings for password uh settings and security um and this will take precedence over that if a password setting is applied to the user. But we can create multiple settings policies and apply them to different users or groups. So let me show you how it's done. I'm going to come over here and we're going to say new password settings. And then we're going to give this a name and a precedent. So we're going to say critical users is going to be the name. We can call it whatever we want. And the precedence is going to be a number. And lower number wins. So this comes into play. Let's say we create a couple of different password settings, um, objects we apply to different groups, and let's say we have a user who's a member of both groups. Well, which password settings do they uh, get? They get the one with the lower precedence number. So precedence one takes priority over precedence two, and so on and so forth. And here we have all the same settings that we have in the group policy object. So enforce minimum password length. For critical users, I want to make that 10. Password history, I'm going to kick that up from 24 to 36. Passwords must meet complexity requirements, yes. This protect from accidental deletion, this applies to the object itself. So your password settings policy is going to be an object in Active Directory just like an organizational unit. And just like with an organizational unit, we want to protect it from accidental deletion. Well, we can do the same thing here, protect from accidental deletion, which means somebody can't just right click and delete the password settings objects. All right, so we have these password settings. We also have aging. So let's say for critical users, they have to change every 30 days and we're not going to let them change for at least three. And then here is, so all of this is password settings, and here is the account lockout policy. Yes, I want to enable account lockout policy uh, after two failed attempts. We're going to reset it after 20 minutes, and we're going to do this until an administrator manually unlocks the account. Now, this is the same thing as going into group policies and setting the account lockout duration to zero. Description lets us do a short description. Password settings for critical users so they have higher security. You don't have to set the um, description, but it can be kind of useful. Now, this doesn't take effect until we apply it to somebody. And that's what this section down here is. Directly applies to, and then we click add. And we can apply directly to an individual user or to a group. So let's add this to Toby. So check names, Toby Ziegler, yes. And for the moment, we're just going to do Toby. And we hit OK. So now this is going to take precedence over the group policy settings. And then the default domain policy that we look at in another video. If I want to modify it, I can come in and change and then add and remove people that it applies to. Fairly straightforward. Okay, so using those password settings objects will allow us to apply different password settings to different individuals or different groups based on what we want their security to be. And it lets us 
have that variance in our password settings that group policy doesn't allow us to do. So hopefully that helps understand how to configure password settings objects.